Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Oh, hello. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I kind of want to wear the hat like this, but then there's like a shadow. So we're just going to do this and say, uh, what's up, fellow kids? How do you do, fellow kids? This episode is episode three in our uh, series uh, that I'm sort of calling Get Good. It's all about learning how to be a better Pokemon player, Pokemon TCG player. Um, all like the things that you can go through in your brain uh, before you start playing and when you're at the table that help you be more consistent, really. It's all about just improving. So yeah, today's episode, the first episode was all about knowledge, what you need to know before you even like go into a tournament or anything. Like you need to know your deck, you need to know the meta, all that good stuff. A uh, link for the playlist will be in the description so you can check those out. The second video was all about setup. So like, what do you do before you even like end your first turn, right? What is your first turn all about? What Pokemon do you pick, etc. This episode, this episode is going to be featuring uh, a uh, very well-known and well-respected uh, TCG player. He's been doing this for many years now. That player is Zach Lesage. Um, he recently got second at OCIC. Congrats, Zach. Uh, I actually filmed this, I think, a couple of weeks before OCIC, so it's been a bit in the making. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to feature a lot of uh, footage with him. He sort of talks about it and takes us through an example. Um, but yeah, today's episode, let's just sort of get into it now. Today's episode is all about routing. Uh, or order of operations, whatever you want to call that. Um, and so, you know, broadly speaking, it's just what order in any given situation should you do the things that you're supposed to be doing? But uh, I will throw it over to Zach now, who will do a little bit more explanation on uh, what he defines as routing. Routing or order of operations is basically the order or the correct order of searching through your deck to make sure that you're I guess not even searching through your deck. It, it's kind of, a, it's more of a hard question to answer than I thought it was going to be originally. You want to properly play cards in a certain order to maximize your percentages. So there's proper routing and there's improper routing, whether it's using a Jirachi first before using an Acrobike or using Acrobike after, like either there's proper directions either way in order to improve your odds, depending on what you're searching for. Um, you know, as you sort of heard, uh, it's all about like, what is the right order for you to do things um, in, in any situation? Uh, now that's not a predefined thing, right? Like, there is no set in stone, you always do it this way. Uh, it's always gonna vary based on the situation, the type of deck you play, but broadly speaking, that's just what the term routing means. Uh, are you doing things in the right order or are there some issues with the order that you did things? Now, in terms of understanding how your deck might route differently than others, there's, I think, a few ways to, um, to go about understanding that. Uh, and that really starts with what is your deck's engine, right? What, is, uh, what are the cards in your deck that help you look through your deck, find stuff, etc., that you can do maybe every turn or, or that you'll have access to more often? Uh, and a couple of examples of that that I'll give you. One example, Let's focus this up a little bit. I'm sure all of you out there are very familiar with Jirachi. Jirachi engines, if you will, um, typically have a very, uh, I wanna say straightforward-ish routing, but it's distinct, right? With Jirachi, the goal, broadly speaking, is that I have this on the field, preferably every turn, but I try in most instances not to leave this as the active Pokemon unless I have another one on the bench and I'm willing to sacrifice one. And the idea behind that is, you know, at the at some point during your turn, if this is in the active position, you can put it to sleep and then you can look at the top five cards of your deck, reveal a trainer card and put that into your hand of that top five. Uh, yeah, and so this is a great card to help you dig a little bit into your deck and look for specific cards. Oftentimes those are um, things like uh, Welder in a bunch of Welder decks. Uh, you could also be looking for outs to find Pokemon like Quick Ball. You could be looking for um, things like Stadiums, right? A lot of decks run Jirachi. And so, 
you know, it has its own routing protocol. It needs to be in the active at some point. It probably needs something like an escape board attached to it so that you can use the ability and retreat it. Um, and yeah, you don't want to waste your retreat unless you have a switch in hand or something so that you can use this ability, get whatever you need, and then bring it, uh, bring up a Pokemon that you actually want to attack with instead. Um, now, with Jirachi, uh, the point of this is really about thinning, right? Increasing the odds of those top five cards being the card that you are looking for. Um, so that is how the routing protocols of a Jirachi deck might vary from the routing protocols of something like a Greens Exploration deck. But Greens has a very different routing protocol. With Greens, you want to say, okay, well, I need to know what I have in my deck, right? But broadly speaking, Greens lets you go grab two trainer cards from your deck. And with Greens, you wanna say, what do I have in hand? Do I have ways to find another Greens if I need it for next turn without having to waste one of the cards that I get with this on a greens. If not, you usually chain greens together. So you will greens for one trainer and a greens. That's a pretty common thing, unless you just need those two other trainers, right? You can see how the routing protocols of a green deck would be very different than that of a Jirachi deck. A greens deck needs to have a lot of consistency cards, poke gears to find the greens. Uh, but with a greens deck, you don't necessarily need to thin the deck out the same way because greens let you go get the cards that you probably need. Uh, and then finally, like, you know, some decks don't run Jirachi or greens and instead they'll just run things like Dedenne's with their supporters. Um, and that's a whole other engine, right? Like you can only use Day Day Change once and it's a Pokemon that's now stuck on your bench. But usually if you have a deck that runs a bunch of Dedenne's, the idea is to use a Dedenne before you want to use a supporter. Um, now, obviously that changes. Uh, but the Dene draws you a bunch of cards, and if you haven't used a supporter, you leave those options open. So, broadly speaking, uh, that's how routing protocols can vary. We're going to give you an example of just an order of operations. Zach is going to walk you through one of those, but yeah. I think the next important thing to consider with order of operations with routing is before you do anything, at the start of a turn, uh, you need to know what you're looking for, right? Uh, and so, yeah, I'm going to throw it over to Zach now again, uh, and he'll sort of take you through maybe what goes into your mind with that thought process. So the most important thing that you need to know before taking any action is actually you figuring out what you need to know. Um, so it's kind of a double edged sword where you need to figure out exactly what your game plan is, whether you're searching specifically for, um, a Pokemon, a trainer, an energy, a key specific card a non-specific card, you can alter your path on what exact, based off the knowledge of what you know, um, finding out exactly what's in your prize cards, what's available in your 60 card deck list. I know a lot of players have, uh, they went for a play and they realized that they took the card out of their deck the, the night before the tournament, or, or they changed up their deck the morning of. So knowing the contents of your deck, knowing the contents of your prize card, and knowing what is actually feasible um, between the cards that you can play. So whether you have a giant hearth, whether you have an acro bike, whether you have a fiery flint, there's cards that you can use to take cards out of your deck. There's also a proper order of playing cards. So whether you need to play a Jirachi first to grab a trainer out, so your acro bike has a higher percentage chance of hitting a fire energy, that might work. Or whether you need to use a giant hearth to grab a couple fire energies out of your deck and then Jirachi to try to hit a welder. Um, no matter what deck you're playing, there is a proper order to be playing it, especially if you're searching for specific cards. So, uh, yeah, as Zach was basically saying, a big part of this is, again, knowledge. Knowledge. The last point before I think we get into the example that's important to remember is probabilities, right? The more and more you play this game, um, the more you get a feel for uh, increasing the odds of you finding whatever it is you need. Obviously with a greens engine, your probability is 100% if it's in your deck. You play greens, you go get whatever the card you're looking for is. But with things like Jirachi, with the Dene, other things, probability, you know, you wanna make the probability as high as possible. So you'll do things to thin your deck out, to increase that probability as much as possible without wasting too many resources. 
So I think that is the other thing to remember with routing is um, how likely are you to find it given what you have in hand and how many cards are left in deck? And then what are the resources that you're willing to give up to find that thing? So I think next we're just gonna show you an example. We're gonna take you through uh, an abilities art example, which uh, it's not the list that Zach necessarily was running. It's something I threw together, but uh, I think it was very prescient that we did an abilities art example, given that's what he took to OCIC. Um, but yeah, it's an abilities art example. Um, and Zach is just going to walk you through his uh, thought process uh, and why he makes the decisions he makes. So in this scenario, we are looking to do 300 damage. And there are definitely some outs available in this deck. So we can attack with Reshiram and Charizard GX to use the GX attack with the extra effect to do 300 damage total. Um, peeking into this open hand that we have, we have the option to hit with Turdinator as well. Um, since I'm looking at the situation as if I'm joining the game for the first time, I ha have no clue about the contents available in the deck, the discard pile, or what's in the prize cards. So first and foremost, <clears throat> I want to look through the discard pile, see exactly what we have available in there um, in case that becomes relevant at all. So we got a couple fires, a uh, mega low honey, a ball picks, a welder. So there's one welder, two fires, another welder. So there's two welders total. Hopefully there's not four because that would really <laughs> suck. Um, Cherish ball switch. We got a Joltik, which, and a chair, chair. So I don't know why Joltik's in there, but that's okay. Sometimes there's a uh, magical cards that end up in your discard pile. Um, so looking at our hand again, I want to look through and find the freest surge that we have available in our deck. So let's go for Cherish Ball here. Um, because I think that gives us the freest option. We could go Pokemon Communication, but there is a chance that there's a Dedenne in the deck. So I'm going to take that chance. Let's peep through what we got here. So, wow, first card is the Dene, awesome. Um, so we've got a couple, two fires. So two fire, I'm just gonna look at the relevant cards. Um, I'm not entirely sure what this deck list is. So we got two, three, four, five, five, six fires in the deck. Seven and a fire crystal. Eight. Got a pal pad. Nine. Welder, welder, cherish ball. Okay, so let's let's grab the dedene i want to peep through the deck quickly again though just to double check to see exactly what our other options are here so we got two fires got that cool more fires i'm i'm more interested in trying to figure out if there's any pokemon if it makes sense to bench that turdinator so i don't see that there was any other pokemon besides heatran gx um so let's, let's shuffle that all up. I don't think it makes sense to get out Heatran GX. We already have a Reshiram Charizard GX. So depending on the situation, that's probably a better card to grab. Um, we might actually end up going back into the deck um, just to thin some cards out because we had plenty of fire energies in there. Um, I don't want to discard too many, but we also had fire crystal. So looking at this hands, we actually, yeah, you want to know what? We're going to go... Fiery Flints. We're going to discard a Fire Energy and a Pokecom. Just because that gives us the maximum outs. Um, so we're going to be reducing cards out of the deck to improve our chances to get the Welder that we need. Um, we got one, two, three, four. And I just want to double check to make sure that there's 100% there's two back there, right? Yeah. So that means no matter what we do, we can always get another Energy um and kind of attack this turn so the way we got that i don't want to use giant hearth at all right now because we're about to dedene and giant hearth is going to be our saving grace after the dedene to make sure that we have the extra fire energies necessary um so we shuffled the deck up awesome um looking at the hand again so we have turdinator dedene fire 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 um let's diversify with the Turdinator at this point. There's no reason to not put it down. Um, and then we're going to attach a fire energy. At this point, I'm going to attach the fire energy to the Rush Ram and Charizard GX. That means that if worst comes to worst, we have the option to be using its attack to do 230 damage. Um, not that in this scenario that that technically matters. We're trying to hit for 300. 
but it does leave us more options in general. Had we attached to a Turdinator, we'd need to get a Welder anyways to be able to use that attack, and we wouldn't have been able to do the 300 attack with Reshram Charizard. We would be able to do it with Turdinator, but it does take an additional option off. So this is more, I'm keeping the Turdinator to keep more options for later on in the game, even though that those options don't matter, it does give you more options at the end of it. And we do have other options that we could use here. Um, perhaps there, our opponent had a Pokemon to bring up with Ninetales. Perhaps it's we decide to use Stellar Wish, we decide to use Giant Hearth. My reasoning to not use those are, we wanna see what our cards are first off the, the Dene, because it does give us more options to dig deeper in our deck. So let's say if we use Jirachi now, we'd be able to look at the top five cards of our deck That'd be really cool, but then when we did Dene, if we didn't hit the Welder, we'd just taken away our opportunity. So we'd be looking at um, only six cards, or five cards, then six cards with the Dene, instead of looking at 11 cards total. Same thing with Giant Hearth. Um, a lot of players would use Giant Hearth now. I'm using it as a safety net to make sure that we can get our fire energies afterwards, because it would suck to only Welder one energy. So here, I'm gonna make the decision to go for the Dene GX, and we're gonna pitch that hand of three away, with there being a giant hearth, we don't need to worry about a power plant or anything like that. So there's three, four, five. Okay, so we did get the welder there, but let's, it, be, it would actually would have been nicer if we didn't get the welder to show exactly how much further this can go. Um, but let's see how farther we could go with this situation. Maybe we can even get the other welder out guaranteed. So let's go Cherished Ball here first. And let's grab the Heatran. GX that's in the deck. We will be going back into the deck. So we don't, don't need to shuffle there. We're just going to try to compartmentalize our searches. Let's go um, Fiery Flint. Let's discard an escape board and our Heatran GX because those cards do no, they don't matter at all for this scenario. And let's see how many fire energies we can grab. So we're going to try to grab as many as possible. One, two, three, four. And how many do we have left at this point? We have one extra. So we're actually going to use Giant Hearth again here. Discarding a... We're going to use Giant Hearth to discard a fire. Um, so that will allow us to reach one more card in our deck. So looking at our deck right now, um, doing a shuffle there, how many cards do we have available in our deck? Four, five, six, seven, eight cards. Cool. I don't think we have anything else that we could use to thin out of our hands. Um, let's say if we were looking for another card in particular, we could use Welder first and guarantee whatever we wanted off of the Stellar Wish, trainer-wise, because we'd only have five cards left in the deck. But let's see what, at this point, we could just go... Um, like, in this case, we got the Welder, so let's play it as if we got the Welder. Let's Welder the energies onto the Rush Ram and Charizard GX. So that we'll draw the three cards. One, two, three. So we didn't get the other welder, but let's say like even further in this situation, we needed a welder next turn. Let's pal pad back two welders. Um, and at this point we're guaranteed our welder because we should have seven cards available in the deck if I'm doing my math correct. With three welders being there and we're looking at the top five. So three out of seven, just our odds are that we're going to be getting a welder 100%, even if two welders are at the bottom of the deck. So we'll use Stellar Wish here after we're done shuffling. And no matter what, we're 100% guaranteed getting a welder off this Stellar Wish. So you can use the odds of Pokemon to deter, like give yourself a higher chance of what you want. And in this case, we ended up getting all of the welders anyway. So like I said, 100% guaranteed our odds of actually getting all three welders were not horrible, but it's uh, not as likely as it would have been. But anyways, at this point, we could retreat into Rush Ram and Charizard GX, use our Double Blaze GX attack for 300 damage. That's what we need to do in this situation. And that's how it ended up working. So as you can sort of see, uh, yeah, there's a lot of decisions to make in a given turn understanding uh, you know, what you might be looking for. And then sometimes even when you find the thing that you might've been looking for, you know, it might be beneficial to you to keep looking and set yourself up for next turn. Um, but yeah, that was just one great example. Uh, thank you, Zach, for, for walking us through your thought process on that. Um, yeah, so that is basically uh, routing or order of operations. 
definitely let me know what you think uh, in the in the comment section. Uh, you know, if I missed anything, I'm sure I did. It's a very broad topic. Like I said, every situation, every deck is going to have slightly varied um, orders of operations. But understanding what the most optimal, optimal way to get to the thing you need in any given situation, that's the goal. And that's just something you learn over time, right? Uh, let me know what you think. Thanks again, Zach, uh, for, for uh, helping teach me and helping teach everybody else a little bit about your thought process and, and how routing works. And uh, I will catch you guys in a future episode of, uh, of Get Good, as it were. Carpe awesome.